Hello and welcome to the Point to Rise show. This is your host, Suzanne Prochelle, former international ballerina that found her passion in mindset, business, and technology, and is today the founder of Rise Media. It is my purpose to use all the experiences of my past to create a better, financially sustainable future for the performing arts industry. And that starts with every single one of us. I believe that being you is your superpower. And I am here to guide you, empower you, inspire you, and give you all the resources you need to rise above what you think you're capable of. Every week, I'll bring you free shows featuring guests, collaboration, and many episodes to ensure that you have the support in your journey as a performer. I want you to know that you are not alone. Stop chasing and start creating. Your success starts now, here, with you. So let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Point to Rise podcast. My name is Suzanne, and I am your host today. In today's guest conversation, um, we are having Amy Danson on board. If you don't know her from the professional athletic um, world, you will get to know her and what she is doing actually in terms of how she's helping athletes to have a healthier career. So Amy is a retired professional athlete who was diagnosed with her second autoimmune disorder in 2016. She went back, she went from playing professional basketball all over the world to battling professional fatigue and not recognizing herself in the mirror at all. From her rock bottom moment, she felt a nudge that told her there had to be a better way. And she relied on her mindset built within her athletic career to pave the way to feeling like herself again and even better. Currently, she is a nutritional therapy practitioner specializing in thyroid health, striving to support women in advocating for their health getting their energy back and feeling like themselves again. So Amy and I, again, met through a few women groups that I am and her are associated in. And when I heard her story, I thought that it would actually bring a lot of value also for the artistic, for all artists, for professional dancers, musician, musical um, performers, really some deeper insight on what we think we have to do and go through on a daily basis. But when we ask other questions that that is actually not true anymore, that we can feel great and be successful, that we can have a career that is thriving without starving ourselves. So without no further ado, here is Amy Danson. I am so thrilled to have you here. The second time is a charm, I think. That's not what they say, but that's what we say. <laughs> I'm so grateful for your grace. Um, and I cannot wait to dive into today's episode with you. I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Awesome. Okay. So Amy, as a former athlete, can you mm -hmm. take us back and through perhaps your journey a little bit on how you got to play professional basketball, how you know, and how you actually got out of it and what that felt like when you realized that this is actually harming myself more than, than helping me or fulfilling my life long dream. Yeah. So I, um, you know, I played uh, collegiate basketball, at Arizona state. Um, we had, um, we, we got, we had a, a young group and got to grow up together and we did some really, really cool things. We, uh, um, made the NCAA tournament and, and went as far as the sweet 16 for the first time in school history. So it was just so, I mean, I lived out my dream there. And then I had the opportunity to go play overseas and play professionally. And I was, I was so obsessed with basketball that, I mean, that was the only option for me. Um, and so I played in Puerto Rico, Spain, Romania, Poland, and Australia. And I played for about eight years and it was amazing. I got to live out my dream. I love traveling. Um, I love food. So it was awesome just to really eat my way around the world, see the world, meet people, um, and get paid, you know, especially as a woman, I got paid as a professional to do what I loved. And that was 
a very unique opportunity. And um, if any young women are out there, there are opportunities to go professional out there. I don't think a lot of us know that. Um, and so I always had an inkling. I would retire around 30. And I, at that point, I'd been playing for eight years straight. And I was emotionally, <laughs> mentally, I was really, really tired. I had played for about four years year round at that point. And I still was playing well, but I was just, I was tired and I didn't feel like I was still at my, I mean, I was still playing really well, but I never wanted to be the hanger on and I wanted to retire, you know, my way. Um, and so I retired at age 30, I came back to the United States and I knew retirement was going to be hard, but I did not know how hard it was going to be. (laughs) Like you can never, you know, guess what that's going to be like. And so it was just a huge transition for me coming back to the U S um, which I loved, but living in one place, you know, I was used to living out of a suitcase with a laptop and I was totally fine with that. Um, I was in a, a pretty serious relationship with my now husband and we were trying to figure it out together. Um, and so I couldn't get a job because nobody recognized me playing overseas for so long. Um, people thought I had an eight year gap from college to, to my first job. So that was really defeating. And, you know, really not having that title and to be, you know, be able to say, hi, I'm Amy and I'm a professional basketball player. I went through a huge identity crisis. And as hard as that is, like most things, it's, it humbled me to my knees and it made me really have to reevaluate, well, is my identity what I do or is my identity who I am? And who is that, right? So I was spent about three years floating around trying to figure out, you know, what me and my husband both, what, what are we going to do? Where are we going to land? And we were both really spontaneous. If either of us had an opportunity, we're like, yeah, let's go, let's go. We were, we, you know, we kind of like to just you know, support each other. And we're always up for new things. Um, and I did a few things here and there. And then I landed a spot coaching, um, at a small D one college. And I thought, well, duh, this is where I'm supposed to be because basketball. Um, and I felt like I was a really good mentor slash coach in that way, because I was heavily recruited in high school. So I knew that angle. I, you know, played at a really, a very, uh, competitive, top university. So I knew that angle and the pressure and like the perspective of that. And then I got to play professional. So I knew that angle. And so I felt like I can relate to them and also be able to tell them what it takes, you know, to fulfill their dreams if they wanted to, to continue to play on. Um, and I loved it. I loved it a lot. I loved the young women. Um, and there's just such a, a vital age to be around. Um, but unfortunately I was around some pretty toxic adults and it was a situation that I couldn't fix. Um, it was one of the first times that I really had to come to head with that somebody just didn't like me because they just didn't like me and I couldn't fix it. And it drove me absolutely nuts. And so I took it so personally. Um, I just couldn't stop spinning. I couldn't stop trying to make it right in my head. I kind of felt like I was left out of a lot of decisions. I felt, you know, I just was trying so hard to, to be in that it was, it was just too much. And I didn't realize the stress that I was kind of accumulating with that. And how did I deal with that stress? Well, I worked out harder and, and then I started to gain weight. So I ate less and, and, you know, my workouts were very intense because that's the only way I knew how to work out. And then I just started to kind of just feel worse and worse and worse. I had creeping symptoms along the way. And then I started to experience hair loss. I was kind of an emotional roller coaster, and I know I'm an emotional person, but I felt a little bit more out of control. Um, and I just, I just felt off and it just kept creeping up and creeping up and creeping up. And, you know, one day I, I, you know, I call it my rock bottom moment where we had hosted some friends for the, for a weekend. And, um, 
you know, I put on the face. And then as soon as that door closed, I, uh, I just started bawling to my husband. And I said, I literally don't feel like myself. And I just don't recognize myself. And at the time I was super puffy. And so I literally didn't recommend recognize myself in the mirror. And at 33 years old, I thought I was just like aging really, really quickly. And I, it just didn't make a lot of sense to me. And so in that moment, um, I ended up quitting that job with no plan B, but as soon as I did, um, a lot of stress just <laughs> really just was released from my body. And, you know, I had a part in that. And that was a really hard lesson for me to learn because I didn't speak my truth in that job. I didn't stand up for myself as I should have in that job. Um, I stayed too long in that job and I will, you know, lesson learned, I will never um, be in a situation where my stress is physically manifesting itself, right? I started to have bouts of insomnia. Um, I went to the dentist because my jaw was hurting so bad. And he's like, well, do you grind your teeth? And I'm like, no. And he's like, well, you're grinding your teeth. And that's, a, you know, that's a sign of stress. And so I was like, okay, I, I'm doing this to myself at this point. I need to, to leave the situation and do something about it. Um, and so I just went from doctor to doctor and I was diagnosed with my second autoimmune disease, which is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And it's an autoimmune disease that affects the thyroid. A lot of times it kind of goes hand in hand with hypothyroidism, which I have that as well. Um, and I was just kind of told like, there's really nothing you can do. You Seriously? Just, oh. And I said, oh my God. well, and I said, well, what is it? And they were like, well, it's when your body thinks that your thyroid is a foreign invader and it's attacking it. And I'm like, okay, so how do we stop it? And they're like, well, we really don't. We just let it run its course until your thyroid doesn't work anymore. And then we will start supplementing with hormones. And so I'm like, well, what about my hair loss? What about, you know, because hair, I mean, obviously as a woman too, it's like very, it's very like, literally it was sensitive, but sensitive um, to feel like, you know, I'm, I'm losing the, like a physical part of myself. Right. And I ended up going to a dermatologist. I was just always on Google. So I thought, oh, maybe i I saw a dermatologist can help with hair loss. And she told me I was prematurely balding at 33. And so I just kept coming up against all of these walls. Nothing was spoken to me about diet. Nothing was spoken to me about lifestyle. Um, and the medication was very basic. Um, and it really wasn't what I needed. I, I did not take any at the time. So when I had that rock bottom moment, I knew in my gut that this could not be, or this would not be the way I chose to live the rest of my life. I would not, I mean, I could not live the way I lived just Monday to Friday, praying to get to Friday, resting for two days, being so sad on Sunday because I had to do it all over again. And the, the, the depletion in energy was just so significant, which I know now is chronic fatigue. Um, you know, at night I would be stressed. So I would have some wine to wind down. I couldn't sleep. And it was just, it's just a repetitive cycle that I know a lot of us are in, whether you have thyroid, whether you have autoimmune, it's the nine to five grind. And, and we tend to get in that rut so, so easily where we're just living for the weekends. And then it's like on the weekends, you're like, do I really want to do anything? Because that's my downtime. That's my rest time. That's my, you know, restorative time. So if I do something, I'm going to be taking even more from my battery, which I don't have a lot right now. And I did not want to live my life negotiating through my symptoms. And so in that moment, I started to do my own research. I found, you know, uh, the most wonderful naturopath who has supported me for the last two and a half years. Um, and with her help and support, um, I started to feel better. And then, um, I just recently, um, was certified as a nutritional therapy practitioner. So I can help women who are in this rut, who are having their rock bottom moments, who are, you know, going to their doctor, telling them their symptoms, telling them they're stressed, telling them they're tired and being dismissed because everybody's tired and everybody's stressed. And you know what, all you got to do is eat less and work out more, you know? And I think really what we're missing 
overall is we're missing empathy. We're missing the, the piece of, I see you and I'm here for you and we're going to figure it out. And so that's really what me starting to take control of my life, my journey. And now that I feel better, a lot of times when we feel better, we, it perpetuates into so many other areas of our lives. And this is my big motivation to pass this torch, help other women, because I, 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 I don't say I wasted, but I went through two extra years of feeling like crap when I think it was unnecessary. So that's my story. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. So <laughs> Lord, I don't, so I have, I have notes a lot of, I don't know where to start first. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, I just want to say, I think sometimes, and I, I do that too. I look back and I say, oh my gosh, I, I used all of those years to, to do what, to feel terrible. However, A, it is a, a testament on what we can actually endure, which mm. shows us how resilient we are as people, which then inside of, you know, our clients gives us actually empathy more so mm -hmm. and understanding that, hey, they're just as resilient as I was. And you can tell your story and saying, if you want to feel like this before you start helping yourself, go right ahead. And I'm telling you, you don't have to, because there will be a point where you will fall in the big black hole yeah. and nobody will be there to, to, you know, catch you because you have to experience that. And I think so many people think that we have to experience that rock bottom in order to help ourselves, in order to wake up, but we have, it, no, we don't. Mm -hmm. We really don't. We can change something, one little tiny thing right now, today, mm -hmm. and start our healing journey. Um, I wanted to say that too. I love that. Yeah. Just so, you know. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I should never use the word wasted by any means because I think you and I both know. But you know, you still feel like it maybe. And that's okay too. Yeah. It's just, it was just a weird time. Yeah. It was a time where I literally, I just, you know, sitting here today, I've never felt, even as when I was playing, I, I, I think I've had thyroid issues for a long time now that I kind of know, but you know, I was really healthy athlete. Um, but I've, you know, sitting here today, I've never felt more stable in my own body. And so to those two years, it, it's just almost like an out of body experience when I think about it, because I felt just so disconnected and also still going through a lot of the identity stuff, still going through a lot of the, you know, I, I heard or read this the other day. It was like, if you're going to go through a lot of similar situations and until you properly deal with it, that, that same type of thing, you're going to come running against it every single time. And I really think that that lesson in people not liking me or really trying to just adapt to fit in. It was a real smack in the face because it was a really long duration of doing that. But I also think it was my opportunity to be like, this is enough. This is enough. And so, you know, that is a beautiful part that came out of that, you know, even amongst all of the, the pain really. Thank you for going back there because it's, so here's what came up for me when I was mm -hmm. listening to you you spend this time trying to prove that you're worthy of belonging in this environment Absolutely. where no matter what you would have done, they would have never considered your worth even the tiniest bit because they didn't see their own worth at all. They, there was so much hurt and pain in their own life that they had to, because you were already shining brighter than anybody else, um, dim your light even more so. And, and, and this counter reaction created this... Mm -hmm this, I would say, re rebel revolution in your body to say like, how many more times do I have to tell you, don't dim your light, don't be somebody else than you are, because we need you as mm -hmm. who you are. Um, and yes, you're right. Like until we fix it, until we look that devil into the eyes and say, I am done with whatever this is, 
um, it's going to come back over and over and over again. So definitely something that I think you should be really, really, really proud of because saying or feeling defeated of, oh, I couldn't fit in because mm -hmm. isn't that the story we tell ourselves? Mm -hmm. I couldn't make it work. I couldn't find a way on how to please them um, versus saying, hey, maybe I'm just too good for them. Mm -hmm. maybe they don't know how to take what I have to offer yet mm -hmm. and I think you know who the heck knows what their perspective is the biggest lesson for me is that I did not you know I am a super successful professional I'm pretty outgoing, extroverted when I'm around people. I love people. I really love, this is my jam though. I like the serious. I like the, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. I like that a lot. Um, but I didn't recognize and or feel grounded in my worth. And that's what was projecting. So I was projecting me not even being feeling worthy enough to know who I am or my self-worth. And I feel like I put out that energy and that was, it was like an easy target. Right. And that for me is what I've, I mean, and it's just like always something that I'm working on. And I think a lot of us are right. Um, you know, especially in this world where we're online and social media and you're trying to run a business and you're trying to, obviously for you and I both, I, we wanna be genuine, I wanna be me. And then you also go up like battling against like saying the wrong thing and blah, 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 all those types of things. So I, I really think that a lot of that comes down to knowing who we are and knowing our worth and really Amen being grounded that. in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't say the wrong thing to the right people. I know. I love that so I love that. <laughs> much. That seriously gives me so much confidence. I, I love that so, so much. I say that a lot to myself. Good. It's the truth though, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have questions about your past. Can I? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Okay. So you said in the beginning, um, especially as a woman, I got to play professional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what's with that? What's up with that? Sorry, but let's dive into the yeah. versus man in the athletic world. Because yeah. it's not much different than in, let's say, in dance or even in the entire performing arts world. Yeah. Um, let's go there. Yeah, let's do it. You know, I just, I, I was uh, doing an interview and it was really about, not really about my business at all. It was really about me and, and, and as athlete. And, um, one of the, the memories that I had had on his question was I grew up in a really small town and, um, there was an NA, there is an NAIA college there. And at the time for years and years and years, the men's basketball program is just, it's been amazing. It's, it's, um, the coach is a hall of famer and he was always so supportive of me. And so I would be at summer camps with maybe one other girl and there would be hundred boys. And so, you know, the question was like, you know, when I was young, so he's like, Oh, were you like trying to prove blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I wasn't trying to prove anything. I went out there and I wanted to, you know, take the first shot. I wanted to make sure I hit the other guy first. I wanted to make sure that like, I wanted to set my presence there. It was never about proving anything about like women's basketball needs to be as prevalent as this, it was, I want you to respect me as a competitor because I was young, but I've always had that like kind of underdog uh, mentality because I always, I grew up playing with, with the boys. I grew up and the only reason they ever picked me because I was taller than all of them, you know? Um, but I used that. Right. And so I always went into it knowing I'd basically have to throw the first punch and I was going to let you know that I was here. And, you know, and I, I had that mentality, gosh, when I was so young, I just wanted to play. Um, and so, you know, having the opportunity to play overseas, we, I made decent money. I didn't make anything near what a, what a man would. Right. 
um, nothing near. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Sorry. Say that no. one more time. Listen. Yeah. What? Yeah. We, yeah, we don't make anything near what a man would make in that same position, same league. And, you know, about the fresh, frustrating thing about that is that, you know, we're putting in the same time effort, if not more, right? Exactly. Um, and so it's just, an, you know, it's an ongoing struggle. It's an ongoing fight to like be recognized. And it's so annoying. But at the same time, as annoying as that is, I'm so, so grateful for the opportunity that I had. I'm so, so grateful I was able to make money and, and, and be able to live out my dream. And it was so, you know, amazing over in Europe and Australia, you know, women's basketball is supported. It was, it's really, really supported. And, you know, I played in a lot of smaller communities, which was even better. They have a lot of hometown pride, you know, and, you know, the women's game is, you know, very much family oriented. So we had a lot of kids around and you can make real impact in the community. And so all of the good things came with that, but. Oh, I love that. Never Thank looked you. at the same, right? No, I it just, but I love that because it's not about being famous and making the big bucks. No, it's about making an impact. And I think that's, that's where we <laughs> just thinking of our first conversation before we hit actually record, you know, mm -hmm. is that yeah, we're following the rut, the nine to five, the stay in the lane, stay in your own box, do as society tells you. And we completely forgot that this is our only life. And why the, Why are we here? To survive? To just follow? To live for the weekend? To plan out our two-week vacation that we get? Like strategically and live through the other 50 weeks just in, in, in hoping that nothing bad is going to happen and we're going to survive it? without even thinking of making a difference in somebody else's life, that we actually have that power. And I think that particularly now, like we're, we're embarking on 2022, like this whole shift that we experienced through the shutdown of COVID, it's like, it, it feels in some points that people have forgotten what that year was like. People, you know, we were so afraid of going back to what it used to be. Well, y'all, you you're there. It's back. Um, and, and I think, you know, this is, this is kind of life, right? We go through hard things and, and not all of hard things, some, some extreme things. A lot of times when we extreme change comes through extreme circumstances, most of the time. And, you know, a lot of times I deal with, you know, a lot of clients really wanting to have weight loss is like the number one thing, which is great. Fine. That's amazing. Um, and, you know, the way I look at health, it's like you were saying before, small changes over time, it takes time. And so very rarely does that extreme change stick. And that's why I think it's so important. And I know everybody has probably heard of this all of the time now, if you follow any coaches, but like we have to be intentional about being in a state of gratitude at some point in our day. Because when we are in an extreme situation, when we are locked down in our homes, when people are losing their jobs, they're getting sick, when people are, it really forced us into hopefully some sort of gratitude for some part of our life. And if not, Hopefully now you are getting some sort of normalcy back. Let's be gratitude. Let's have some gratitude for that. And so if we don't take some time to be intentional about what we are grateful for today, it's so easy to get back into that rut. It's so, so easy. Um, and I think it's important to understand we can be grateful for where we are at, but we can also desire more. And those can live in the same space. Yeah. If you're not where you're at right now, that's okay. We can always find something to be grateful for. And then let's set up a plan to, to, to get you that, whatever you're desiring, whether it's health, money, time, freedom, whatever that looks like. So I think 
yeah, it's human nature, unfortunately, to go right back to the things that we said we would never do. That's okay. That's human nature. But we've got to have awareness around that. We've got to slap some gratitude with it and really like be, be grateful and then figure out what that more looks like for you. Figure out what that more looks like for you. It, you know, so many people don't understand that they deserve more. Mm, that yeah. they, And I see that in performing artists over and over and over again. You know, they're just grateful that, oh gosh, I have a job. It pays me 450 bucks a week and I work 20 hours a day and I don't have time for anything else. But yeah, I have a contract. You know, it's that you're worth more. You deserve mm -hmm. more. You do not have to settle. And it's that going blindly and following whatever and whoever told you how it's going to be versus, hey, but this doesn't work for me. And I think that that is so beautiful about your story. That job that you were in, it didn't work for you. Mm -hmm. And yes, it took you a little bit of time to find the courage to say, no, I'm Amy. This doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. And you found it. Like you could still be there, darling. You could still yeah. be schlepping through the nine to five, yeah. perhaps being bold and, and not being able to, um, you know, function the way you're thriving now. Yeah. So I think it's possible for everybody. We just have to decide that that's, that we deserve more, that we are worthy yeah. of more. Yeah. And that's so. right. And that nothing that we're asking for is too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, like you said, you know, it's, it's, it's tiny steps of courage, or you can look at it as taking risks either or risks. is just going to build courage, courage, probably a little bit of risk taking. And once you kind of take a first little step into something that feels uncomfortable, you know, and you figure out it's probably not as bad as you thought it's going to be. Cause a lot of times we assume everything is going, and I do this, I assume the worst, absolute worst case. And then I build it up, build it up, build it up, build it up. Right. So if we can just push past that, because a lot of us were worried about the unknown, start taking little risks, which is starting, you're going to start build courage. And I think that if we can just start taking steps and see what's on the other side of those risks, opportunity starts to kind of come before you and things that you probably weren't, couldn't anticipate, weren't aware that they were even out there. Um, and, you know, and for me, it's, it's business, you know, I, <laughs> I started my own business and it took me a whole half a year to tell anybody without downplaying it as a side hustle, you know, and, and <laughs> I'm not a business, you know, I have all these stories in my head. I'm not a business person. I don't know how to make money. Um, what does a business owner do? What, what does that mean? You know, all of these things, um, not wanting to tell people I started my own business. So there is a lot of mindset around what we deserve money wise, what we deserve relationship wise, friendship wise, career wise, impact wise. And we always you know, we always tend to put up our own limitations and that's okay. That is, it's, it's a, uh, a mechanism of safety. Our brain is tr trying to help us with, but we have to be aware of what's helping us safety wise, what's holding us back and what is on the other side of one little risk. What is on the other side of stepping out of your comfort comfort zone just a little bit because once we start to get in a rhythm of doing that doors start to open you start to meet people that I would have never met you well what a shame that would have been right so that's just you know an example of different opportunities coming out of one for me big scary decision but I couldn't not if I wanted to help the women I want to help. Wow, and that was really nice. Um, I, I'm I'm grasping for words because I'm like.
I'm so bare with you. I am so <laughs> understanding. I'm a, yeah. I'm in a business accelerator for startups at the moment. And mm -hmm. literally every time I log into my portal, every time I have a call, I feel like I'm going to pass out. Yeah. Because it is so uncomfortable. And we, because we judge our not knowing, because mm -hmm. we judge ourselves already for yeah. should we be knowing this? Shouldn't this be common sense? Shouldn't you be knowing what a KPI um, is? Shouldn't you be knowing how you evaluate your company? Well, no, darling, you don't. Right. This is why you're learning. This is why you, yeah. you can, you know, overcome. What do they say that when you, when you start a business, it will expose every limiting belief you've ever had in your mm -hmm. life and the ones that you didn't even think you have? Yeah. And I like 1,000% 1, 1, mm -hmm. agree with that. Yeah. I think something um, that makes me feel better is like, I'm like, most business people have been in the exact same spot I have been. Oh, yeah. So yeah, just yeah. keep going. You're not special, darling. No, no absolutely no. not. No, no, keep going. Keep going. And isn't that with athletes still the same? Like, let's, let's be honest. Yes, you are physically performing all the time, but let's like, before you go into a match, like having doubt in your mind that you can be winning, that your team can be winning is exactly where you are going to lose the game, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's and it's the game. same in business. Mm -hmm. It's the same for performing artists. It's the same for anybody that is doing anything. Wow. If you mental. don't believe, yeah, you it's are your own mental. vessel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. Now, Let's, let's pivot here a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. When we first talked, you said something that, that really caught my attention. Um, and it was, we are the most technology nation, techn technology nation advanced. Yeah. Or, yes. Hang, so I'm making, you do that. You do that. <laughs> you, you say that. You got this better. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, it's ironic, um, you know, that we're in the United States, the most technology technologically how, how do you say that I don't even know we're both at a you, loss you're native yeah. and not me so yeah. no. <laughs> we're we're the most tech advanced that we've ever been beautiful thank you science wise everything and we are the sickest we have ever been as a nation mm. and there it is a a huge gap and it makes me fearful for where we are going, the trends we are going. And, you know, with what we have just experienced over the last two years, our health is everything. You know, the strength of our bodies to fight off anything is, is everything. Um, and so I feel like, I feel like just having a different perspective on health and it's, and I say different, it's just the basics, but especially with women to get out of the fad diet stuff, to get out of the, the, the societal pressure stuff that we all have in our heads that, you know, this is how you're supposed to age. You had a baby, you should be bounced back by now, or you should be this, you should be that. Oh, you're, you're a professional athlete. Why? you know, I probably should look a certain way, or I should probably have that same body. Right. You know, all of these things, um, that play with our confidence that we all go through. Um, and so I want there to be a drastic change in our health, but I want it to be done in the right way. And especially with women, we, we have a lot of hormone stuff going on with our thyroid, with autoimmune, there are different ways we have to approach our bodies when we are in that state. And by state, I mean a high stress state. And what we have been told is losing 10 pounds in two weeks, three shakes a day with a piece of meat at the end of the day, we've, we have got to get away from chasing a result and <laughs> putting our bodies through it in the meantime. It's the, okay, I need to look a certain way versus why don't we just go back to feeling great? Yeah. You know, 
I mean, when I was my fittest and rippest and, and whatever, however you want to call that with the, you know, every muscle you could literally play harp on. Yeah. Um, I was also the most unhealthiest. Yeah. Because A, it was never taught how to get there in a healthy way. Right. There was no support whatsoever. Just eat less and do more. Better now, eat nothing and do more. Because your body is young, you can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, don't worry about how you're going to feel in 10 years or 20 or when you're, you know, hitting menopause. It doesn't matter. That's not in the now. That's later. You can deal with that. They can fix it. There's a pill for this. Um, and now on the verge of turning 48, I am telling you, it is not fun mm -hmm. to deal with the physical. And I can, I'm, I'm so grateful that because my body was always a very, very healthy and supportive um, vessel mm -hmm. and was always there and let me know, okay, to this point and no further, because mm -hmm. if you go any further, you will have um, really strong consequences to carry later on that you, mm -hmm. you will not want to. Yeah. Not everybody is that in tune. Not everybody gets that gift, you know? And, and I think that when we are younger, we think we're invincible anyways. Like nothing can happen Absolutely. to us. Absolutely. Right? Um, and that is exactly the time where we, where we should be teaching ourselves how to take care of us mm -hmm. and how to find gratitude, like immense, endless, heroic gratitude for our body because if that one isn't working right you have nothing like all the money in the world will not help you to heal what you've done to it yeah and that's the thing is like you know in my and I, I talk about this a lot but in my rock bottom moment yeah I had some weight to lose but I didn't that was not on the top of my list I wanted to feel like myself and I wanted energy to live my life the way I wanted to live my life. That those were my two things. And the way I coach my clients is we are going to chase energy and we're going to let weight loss be a byproduct of that energy. Because then we take the focus off of the number and we put the emphasis on how we feel because we can do, and I love me some blood work. We can do all the blood work. We can take all the tests, but we also need to combine those results with how you're feeling, which I also think is lacking right now in, the, in our medical field. We're taking the tests and we're not doing the full tests and we're giving one number and saying, well, this is normal. So you're fine. Well, how are you feeling? I don't feel fine. So let's, let's shift our perspective. Let's chase some energy. Let's chase you feeling good in your skin. Let's chase you being able to chase your babies around, yeah. be outside with them. all of those, all of those things that matter, right? Weight loss is a great goal to have, but we are so caught up in it that it takes us on an emotional roller coaster along with our fluctuations, which are totally normal as women. And so that is my mission. And that is my challenge because I don't think actually, I know enough of us don't have the confidence that we should, you know, I look at you and I can say all of these wonderful things about you and how I feel like how you make me feel, how you, you know, all of these things. But if you don't believe that it doesn't matter, it just doesn't matter. And we need more of us to know our gifts, to know ourselves, to know how we want to impact the world, how we want to lead ourselves. Because I think too, if we get into all of that and get in and, and work through some stuff, we are not only going to be leading by example. So people are going to be coming up to you like, what are you doing? Weight loss or not, they're going to ask you, what are you doing? Because your energy is changing. Your vibe is changing. The way you speak to yourself is changing. So the way that you speak to your, to others are changing. And then I think also it's going to bridge the gap for women supporting more women. Because I think that that needs to change. It's, it's, it needs to change. And I've told myself the story for so long that I'm just a guy's girl. I just have a hard time having friendships with women. I guess 
women don't get me, blah, 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 blah. More of it had to do with me and my confidence. More of it had to do with me and my self-worth had nothing to do with the other women. You're speaking my soul, sister, because <laughs> that was exactly me before, mm. yeah, before March, 2018. I also oh. thought like women, it's like, I had no women friendships, like never. Oh, you have a bestie? What's that? Like, what? Um, yeah, didn't do that. Couldn't do it. Totally. Well, by the way, March 20th is my wedding anniversary. So that's oh, a great Why is March 13th? Date. Oh my gosh. <laughs> perfect okay that's a great I love numbers so that yeah. that's a great great day for both of us yeah wow well look at that we discovered just on this show how close we are actually I know. This is like I, my palm's so sweaty okay yeah. let's um <laughs> we'll talk about this later yeah when when I want to work with you when I want to mm -hmm. find you where do I go and what kind of offers do you have yeah um right now um I'm just on Instagram at the thyroid pack. And so the pack coaching is my business and pack stands for purpose, accountability, consistency, and knowledge. And also just a pack mentality because I love teamwork. And I think, especially with women, we can do some powerful things in numbers. Um, and so just, yeah, just DM me at the thyroid pack um, website is coming. And right now I'm just offering one-on-one -on -one um, coaching. And in 2022, I may or may not be hosting a retreat for women. And, and then, um, um excuse me. <laughs> yes. Yes. So okay, <laughs> details will be coming. Um, because I, I love, I just, I love the idea of the magic that can be created in, in a container, um, that's in person, um, and with the right group of women that, are intentional about their growth and um yeah so details to come but right now just offering one-on-one -on -one. by the way retreats you guys and just go follow her because retreats are they're magic mm. like you don't know what you're missing out on if you don't go to a retreat or two or three mm -hmm. in a year it it literally it's not only mm, the the friendships that you form and, and the tribe that one builds, but it's also the time that you are, like it cuts every learning, every aha moment, every unveiling of, you know, kept subconscious stories. Mm. It just helps to release all of that in, in, in such a quick fashion. It is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. It really absolutely. truly is, right? Like I, yeah, I no, went absolutely. with you and I'm like, wow, new person over here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's just, it's really rejuvenating. And I think, you know, if you're especially willing to, to get a little vulnerable, you're going to get a lot out of it. And that's what I hope to continue to do in, in platforms like this too. Um, I don't have any shame talking about <laughs> my issues of, you know, people not liking me or my issues with, you know, me thinking that, you know, I'm just not fit to be, uh, you know, around other women or anything like that. I think we just, we, the more vulnerable we are, the more, more relatable we are. And that's really what it's all about. Beautiful set. Last question, my love. Mm -hmm. um, with everything you know now, with what you've been through, yeah. Um, if your 16 year old self would actually listen to you, she would sit down and listen to you. What would you tell her? I would tell her that she is, she is perfect the way she is and that she does not have to spend so much time trying to adapt to and with others to fit in. And I think I would tell her just to enjoy the process and don't rush it. Um, but everything else I would keep the same. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amy. Thank you for of being course. here. Thank, Thank you, for you so much. Having like the courage to share so openly because particularly us women, um, Sometimes that feels a little heavier than 
for others, perhaps because um, we feel judged, perhaps, or mm. vulnerability equals weakness. And I think if there's anything that I've learned over the past three years is that vulnerability makes us stronger. Mm-hmm. It gives permission to everybody else to go inside and feel and unleash. Um, yeah. So thank you for that. Thank you for permission. All right, you guys, you know yeah. the drill. <laughs> go follow Amy, go check her out. Um, and as always, share this podcast with somebody that could perhaps really need to listen to it share your biggest takeaway and we also want to really know what um you know struck a chord in you like something that didn't sit well with you something that you found resistance over let us know tag us in your instagram post and we will reshare we're sending you all so much love thank you for being here thank you thank you so much for listening if this message resonates with you please pass it on to someone who needs to hear this right now And if you like what you've heard, your feedback will go a very long way. If you just take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review, that would mean the world to me. Till next time, point at yourself to rise to all that you are capable of.